from the uh, animal lab, I will take you to the, to the university lab, uh, the, the human lab, or the aerodynamics lab for a few moments, and um, uh, rush with you to the history and uh, look with you uh, into the future, the near future of, uh, of aerodynamics and aerodynamics testing. So it's not bad to have a positive view of, uh, of the future, but sometimes everything turns gray, and especially when incontinence arises, uh, you have a problem. And some of uh, persons with incontinence visit me and ask me for a solution. And what I would like is that I would not have to ask any questions, do not any investigation or test, be subsequently absolutely certain about my diagnosis at not cost. Of course, that's not a realistic future. What is more realistic? That is that we are going to find and, and search for more patient-friendly approach of the tests that we need and at less risk and less little cost. So we are trying to diagnose low urinary tract function already for decennia, maybe for ages, maybe for centennia. Uh, we are trying to search for alternatives for urodynamics and for lesser invasive urodynamics. And I will um, rush to that uh, uh, um, uh, search. Urodynamics uh, is there about 140 years ago. It was more or less designed in, in the north of Italy. And since then, there has been a search for alternatives. And you have seen the continuing search uh, from Professor Derek de Ritter's lab in imaging. Uh, we, we have urethral function tests. We have neurophysiology, uh, spectrography, and biomarkers as some of the elements of the search for alternatives of, or accessory tests in, uh, in neurodynamics. I will, again, rush uh, through that with you. Imaging in the clinic uh, has had not very good specificity, not IVU, not cystoscopy, not muscle structure in, uh, imaging, uh, pelvic floor muscle structure, uh, by any method that is available for imaging. In the clinic, the sensitivity and the specificity to uh, diagnose the dysfunction is low. Uh, what we have is renal ultrasound and uh, 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 to de uh, determine hydronephrosis. That is what, uh, what led. Pointing cystography is not um, uh, as relevant in, in the usual uh, patient with low urinary tract dysfunction, but is relevant in neurogenic uh, low urinary tract dysfunction and is relevant in a proportion of children, which is not on the slide. Um, those uh, methods of imaging, transrectal ultrasound and suprapubic, uh, have remained to be important uh, with regard to prostate size and uh, are very rel re relevant for phosphoid residual uh, urine. The truth of all thickness uh, has not been specific, nor for uh, blood outlet obstruction, nor for uh, the truth of activity or overactivity. Um, yes, we will have portables in the future, and uh, bedside and or self-scanning uh, self will be possible in the, in, in the near future. Uh, urethral function test. All variations are basically, essentially, um, in the large group, you will show differences in urethral function, um, but uh, for the clinical purposes, the, the, the inherent overlap of, of all the tests uh, um, hinders uh, the application, the general application in the clinical uh, uh, picture to, to make a specific diagnosis on, on one, one person. So neurophysiology, relevant to show uh, dysfunction in, in a small proportion, the reason for dysfunction in a small proportion of patients, but is yet unable to, uh, to, uh, to um, uh, support uh, any of the specific uh, or, or the general diagnosis of, uh, of dysfunction and is not uh, measuring the dysfunction by itself. Uh, the spectroscopy or Doppler has not been able to, have not been able to make their way to the clinic uh, at this moment. Biomarkers. 
there's not yet a specific nor sensitive biomarker available. What has been done in most of the biomarker studies, they are tested against symptoms, which is, as you know, not the golden standard of um, testing um, uh, a new diagnostic uh, um, uh, element. Uh, the, uh, every new technology should be tested against uh, objective uh, dysfunctions and not uh, against the symptoms. So, uh, what has been the future is, uh, so, and, and, and what survived is some indirect and accessory Im imaging um, which has been relevant. So, is that a sad story? No, we learned a lot of everything, but the winner in direct assessment of function is still neurodynamic testing. Uh, the only way to objectively measure uh, the dysfunction I may say unbiased by what the patient tells you is, uh, is your dynamic testing. So we have flometry, systometry, and are there any evolutions in that? Yes, there are. Uh, flometry is, uh, there is a more and more attempt to make that more reliable uh, in the sense of more patient friendliness, but also maybe um, in the future uh, decision supported uh, analysis of, of pattern and analysis of uh, technical reliable and maybe things like quantified abnormality. And I will, so, I will show you an example of how, how that might be. So here's a flow, flow, uh, flow rate that you can consider more or less abnormal. How abnormal is that? What, what, how would we grade that? If we compare that with an ideal flow, um, which is then volume standard and for gender and age, um, if it is below uh, 18 uh, years, then you can make some calculations and decide that uh, this flow rate uh, is, oh, I don't, do not see, see the figures coming up. There should have been a figure coming up. This flow rate is being calculated as 33% of normal. And again, this, another way of looking at this is how irregular is this flow, meter, flow rate, and it is possible to calculate that this uh, flow rate is 68% uh, irregular. So that pressure or pattern analysis can also be uh, applied to pressure patterns. So we see overactive, the total overactivity here. How overactive is this? Uh, again, how abnormal is this? We can measure that to the ideal filling pressure and compare that and quantify the difference. And um, things as area under the curve are basically uh, simple and they can be put into the machines to help you decide. It's not an alternative for your diagnosis, but it's to help you decide um, what, is, uh, what is relevant and what is uh, relevant for diagnosis, for your dynamic diagnosis. Uh, such analysis should in include uh, sensation patterns which are uh, also relevant. So the ICS standard is, as you know, water filled system with external center sensors and the zero uh, of what we measure is outside the patient and therefore you can see that the pressure inside the patient is around uh, 40, 40 centimeters of water if the patient sits uh, on a chair or, or on, a, on a flow meter system, system during your dynamics. So, but that system, that water filled system is position sensitive and movement sensitive. You can observe the patient talking to me um, and you can uh, of course observe, uh, observe coughing and you can observe that the patient is, uh, is moving and um, uh, resetting uh, to start his, uh, his folding. And you need skills basically to, to, to uh, well uh, settle the system to zero and to, uh, to observe uh, what is happening during neurodynamics. And maybe the, the other system, which is air-filled, which is on the market, measures inside the patient and um, has some positivities, and that is that it is not uh, 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 related to an external center, and there are no fluid movements in the tubing. However, this system measures difference. And what is the difference? Uh, if we put in a water and an air-filled system, you can see that 
basically the presses are similar and you can see that some movements are picked up in both systems and you can also see that some artifacts which is the, the catheters moving are not picked up by the air system is that an advantage or is that a disadvantage we should learn in the future are small pressure differences between uh, both, uh, both pressures. This is an abdominal pressure, that's the other abdominal pressure, and this is the vesicle, and that's the other uh, uh, vesicle. They show small differences. Are they relevant or are they not? Uh, we should learn in the future. And a study uh, showed that many, many, many differences are very small. This is the water pressure and this is the uh, 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 air, air pressure uh, at first sensation. And this is the uh, identical in the, in the strong desire, at the strong desire uh, in, in about 40 measurements, uh, head to head in, uh, per patient. And then you see that there are some outliers and, and many are in the, in the, in the narrow uh, line in the diagonal. Uh, what do we learn from that? The outliers are both sides. Sometimes the one is better than the other, or sometimes I do not know which, is, which one is better. And we have to learn, and we have to learn the specificities of, of each of the system. So, uh, on average, the differences are very small. This is water, this is air, this is water, uh, this is air. Also, at, uh, at the same uh, moments, first sensation uh, and, and strong desire, this is the truser, that is the truser, this is the truser, and that is the truser at that moment. And that says that, that on average, the, the, the differences are, are small, are extremely small, but, but uh, there are some outliers and there are some differences in the patterns that we observe. Uh, in the one hand, we do not know what's the new thing, but we do not also not know what's the, what's the current water system. And we learn about our own, the system that is standard, that that is not perfect as well. So the differences are in both, in both directions. And of course, we need more testing, not to test, let's say, technical reliability, but we need to test what is the typical uh, uh, of each of the system and how does the system behave in a living uh, human body. So again, pressure, uh, the future, should, it should be uh, user-friendly and, and, and robust. And maybe the, the, the future will also uh, uh, hold for you that, that the water filled system is going to be improved. Uh, all the artifacts that we, that we sometimes see and that are depending on, on, on how you settle the system may be improved. Maybe air fills uh, system will be uh, uh, an improve of our system, but we should have uh, to learn to handle it. And very specific, it's another way of looking. It's like comparing X-ray and MRI. So those systems are essentially different and they should be uh, handled that way. So maybe the micro tip is, um, is, uh, is on the stage, is, is, uh, and, and, and that will be the same discussion again. So the other ways of measuring pressure outside the, set, uh, the, 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 system, the patient, yes, it's technically, technically good, but it's clinically difficult to, uh, to calibrate. So urodynamics will, might be more uh, ambulant and mobile, um, and uh, as you saw, might be more intravesical. Uh, ultrasound of the detrusor may be um, um, uh, like this, the shape or, or stretch or stress may be something that is applicable in the future. We are almost there, we are almost to, uh, there to finish. Um, here to stay is uh, ultrasound, um, here to stay is systometry and pressure flow uh, metry and, and many uh, uh, old things of the future have left, uh, have left the scene. Yes, we should strive, uh, uh, try to arrive at more foolproof uh, urodynamics and at better friendliness and at um, uh, analysis support. And I thank you for your attention.